So that's what we're going to do. We're going to study uh, the book of Acts. Last week, we already covered some uh, material from the book of Acts. But if you ever forget, you know, what's the purpose of studying the book of Acts? This year, we want to live in clarity. We do not want to depend on the situation around us that is so uncertain. We want to know the sure way that God wants us to live by. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are faithful, coming week after week, we will study that together. I promise you that the preaching team, we study this hard. We, we pray about it. And, and, and we, we ask God, God, what is it that you want to deliver to the congregation so that we can live in clarity this year instead of being shaken by what's happening around us. So let's look at the book of Acts. We continue from last week teaching. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9 to 11. I don't have a clicker. Oh, you are about to give me. Thank you so much. All right. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 9. Okay. Just to give you a background, how we come to verse 9. So the book of Acts is a, is a it starts with the period of time when after Jesus was resurrected, he walked among his disciples for 40 days. 40. Everybody say 40. 40. And then this is the 40th day. What happened on the 40th day? On the 40th day, Jesus was taken up to heaven. Okay? He was taken up to heaven, but before he was taken up to heaven, he gave instruction to his disciple. That's what last week was. Remember, he talked to his disciple. He said, you will receive the power and when, when the Holy Spirit come. And when the Holy Spirit come, you will be my what? My, my witness. Where? In Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the world. How many remember that? That Acts chapter 1, verse 8, right? You remember that. And then, now, verse 9. Verse 9 is when this exciting and miraculous uh, thing happened before the eyes of the disciples. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. In verse 10, the disciples were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. And when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. We understand these two men uh, were angels. Men of Galilee, they said. The angels speak to the men of Galilee. Remember where they were. At that time, they were in Jerusalem. That is not their hometown. Their hometown is in Galilee, lake area. They travel with Jesus to Jerusalem, right? Because it was a special occasion. They celebrated Pascha when Jesus was crucified. So that's why the angel... The angel uh, addressed the men, men of Galilee. You are not men of Jerusalem, you are men of Galilee. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. So here is where, where we're going to do a little role play. Imagine that you are the disciples at that time. And when Jesus was taken to the sky, the Bible said they were looking intently up into the sky, looking. My question to you is, what do you think went through the thought of the disciples? Why, are they, why were they looking into the sky? If you have to speculate, speculate a little bit. It's okay. What do, why do you think is in the mind, what do you think in the mind of the disciple? Looking Whoa, what's going on? Like, what is your speculation? Give me some of your thoughts. Why were they looking intently? What went through their mind? Daydreaming. Daydreaming. Okay, well, that's possible, right? Uh, daydreaming or actually bengong in Indo. Bengong, right? When you are surprised, you are bengong. And, and when people bengong, you know, I don't know what in English... Bengong. Uh, daydreaming? <laughs> you, you think so? I think it's a dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. Right? Dumbfounded like 
What is going on? It's possible, very possible. How about curious? Like, whoa, I never seen this before. Right? This is miracles. Have you ever seen, you know, this is like back 2,000 years ago, nobody flies other than birds. And this person fly, right? Curious. What is going on? But I think the more likely one, remember Luke, the writer of the Gospel of Luke, wrote this book of Acts, right? The more likely one in their mind is awe. They, are, they were in awe. Wow. Such a miracle happening in their eyes. I think they were in awe. And why do I say that? Because Luke wants you to be in awe also, together with him. You know what Luke is doing? Luke actually is behaving like a witness. He was eyewitness, and then he wants you to see what he saw. And what he saw was miracle, and he, he was describing the group of people that were in awe. Wow, what a magnificent sight. Never seen this before. And, and why I say that Luke wants us to be in awe also with him. In fact, the whole, you know, the whole gospel writer, how many gospel is in the, in the Bible? How many? Bible quiz. How many gospel is in the Bible? What are they? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All of them, they reported what Jesus did and what is their intention so that you know what Jesus did. But at the same time, they want you to be in awe and believe what happened. Well, let me give you an example. In the book of Luke, okay, Luke is the same writer, right? And uh, this is the story that we read during our offering. Remember, this is the healing of the paralytic person, orang yang gak bisa jalan ya, meme. And look, immediately he stood up in front of them, took what he had been lying on, and went home praising God, the sick person. And then, follow the commentary. The commentary is, is Luke comment. It's not, you know, this is in the head of Luke. But he, it is his in his um, observation, everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. They were filled with awe and said, we have seen remarkable things today. Why do you think it's necessary for Luke to say all that? He was just reporting the reaction of the people. And he wants to convey the message of awe. God has done marvelous things. In fact, all, as I said, all the gospel writer. He, they wrote down their eyewitnesses so that you and I can be also in awe and believe in Jesus. That's their hope. That's their intent. It is very intentional. They are writing this. They want us to be in awe also along with them. The problem today is that we can so easily be in awe of other thing, but not in awe in God's thing. Let me show you something. It's a video clip, okay? A video clip of people who were in awe. Now, this video clip, it's 60 years old. So, let's see if I can play it. How many know the Beatles? Older people know. Younger people, they know So Young, Bieber. But I, my generation, know Beatles and Bee Gees. But this is a video of when the Beatles came from to America from England. They were England English band, okay. And then they came to America. This guy, his name is Ed Sullivan. He was the first one who introduced the Beatles to the American audience. Look at the people. She was in awe. Kamu mau pingsan tuh. It's like the Beavers or uh, BTC fan, you know, the army or the whatever they call it, soldiers, army. Huh? 
What is that? BTS! BTS! Okay. All right. So, similar. And then, you know, this, this video is three minutes. Can we jump to the last? I mean, you'll see a lot of, a lot of crazy people that they were in, in awe, right? Do you think they're handsome? What do you think, girls? You think they are handsome? Okay. All right. So that's that's the you know in awe, right? We we lost the capability to be in awe, but at the same time we are not really, really losing it because we are redirecting it. We can we can be easily in awe with singers. You know, the the last one that I really like is So Yang. So Yang. So young, something like that. You know So Young? Anybody know So Young? Oh, you don't know So Young? She is the Mar Mariah Carey of Korean K-pop singers. Anyway, you know, <laughs> that's So Young. And then Marie, Marie, what is it? Marie Bell? Morissette. How, how many know Morissette? You don't know. That is uh, Mariah Carey of Philippines. <laughs> okay? So all, you know, we, we, why, why were we so in awe? You know, Morissette can sing four octaves. It's very, very uh, good. You know, you can look it up. Don't look it up now, okay? I know somebody, some, some of you is trying to look it up just now. No, don't look it up. You look it up at home. But we were in awe. You know, we, we can be in awe when we stand uh, in front of uh, pictures painted by Picasso or Van Gogh. Or when we, when we went to Sistine Chapel in Rome, you know, it's a big building. We can say, oh, in awe. You know, in fact, any cathedral, if you go to from Rome to Jakarta even, the Jakarta Cathedral, that is so big, right? And you can be in awe. But why did we not in awe sometime we, when, when God is doing wonderful, remarkable thing? We, we are not in awe. We should be in awe. And the writer of the gospel wants you to be in awe. Hallelujah. They intentionally want us to, to be in awe. To, to magnify God. You know, when God heal you from the disease, sickness, so bad. Some of you, I know God brought you out from very bad sickness. Are you being able to say, God indeed has done remarkable thing. Tuhan itu luar biasa. Can you still say that? When God, you br God brought you out from sickness, I was in sickness in 2011, and I look back, I can say, God, you are awesome. Thank you, God. I'm still here. You still want to do something through my life. When God brought you out from a very difficult financial situation, were you able to say, God, you have indeed done remarkable things in my life? Hallelujah. Don't lose that capability to be in awe. When God helped us, to pass a certain exam at school when we did not even have time to finish reading the textbook. Yet, somehow you passed the test. Are you saying, God, indeed you have done marvelous thing in our life? And finally, but very important, when we realize that who we were in the past, we did not know God. We were sinners. Our life were purposeless. But today, you find your, yourself knowing Jesus. You find yourself changed to a better person compared to before. And that is a miracle because nobody can change. It's only the power of the Holy Spirit and your willingness to surrender to Him. But yet, you are here today. Are you able to say, God, you indeed have done marvelous thing, remarkable thing in my life. Don't lose that capability to be in awe. Because if you, are, if you are in awe, if you can develop this attitude of in awe, let me tell you, your worship will get deeper. Because you see that when people are in awe, they understand that God has done marvelous things in their life. They can worship. They can worship. There's the difference between just singing a song and worship is Singing a song, everybody can do. You know the word, you know the melody, you sing a song. But to worship, you have to feel to be in awe. 
you have to realize that God has indeed done marvelous thing. When you are in awe of what God has done, then you can worship. So from in awe will always lead to worship. That's what you saw earlier in the, in the verse. Right? Everyone was amazed and gave praise to God. That's the natural progression as you are in awe. If some of you think, I, I never know how to deeply worship. If you want a quality worship out of your life, if you want to de- worship, be able to worship deeper, develop that ability to be in awe in your life. And to develop this attitude of in awe, you have to reflect on your life. My wife said, the way I, I reflect on God's, uh, you know, to be in awe, is to realize that God has indeed done this in my life. You know, some people, they, they are skeptical. Everything that happened, oh, kebetulan, probability, oh, it's just incident, oh, you know, uh, I, I work hard for it. But you know that without God, nothing good can happen in our life. You have to realize that and develop that spirit of in awe, and from in awe, you can worship deeper. Hallelujah. How many understand this? Right? In order to worship, quality worship come out from a heart that appreciate God. A heart that is in awe. God, how marvelous, how remarkable your work is in our hand, our, our lives. Psalm 145. God is magnificent. He can never be praised enough. There are no boundaries to his greatness. Generation after generation, stand in awe of your work. Each one tell stories of your mighty acts. Hallelujah. From awe to worship. But it seems that the angel is not, not to... The angel says something, right? He said, men of Galilee, why are you looking into the, star, into the sky? That's, that's the next one. Did you sense a little uh, prodding, a little um, kind of reminder for the men of Galilee not to stand too long? Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? And then the same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way. You have seen him go into heaven. So let's do a little um, thinking, if you may. In the same way, let me ask you, in what way is that? Well, Jesus came out to the, to the, to the, to the sky, right? And the angel said, he will come back in the same way. What does it mean in the same way? Does it mean that the way he go up, which is like using... Uh, invisible uh, elevator, right? Tut, 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 tut. He will come back mechanically to be the same way. What do you think? Is that what it means, this verse? Hello? What do you think? How do you think Jesus is going to come back? Just the same way? Up, down, like elevator, right? Another elevator, come back down. Well, it is possible. But I think it means more than that. What does it mean? In the same way that he went up, in the same way he will come down. Now, to understand that, I do a little study. And that word, in the same way, in Greek is called tropos. Tropos. Ho tropos. The, the same way, tropos. And what it means is, in the same way, in the same manner, in the same circumstances, in the same style. Okay, now, I think it means more than just coming down with invisible calculator. I think it's talking about the same circumstances. What circumstances, you may ask? Now, to understand the circumstances is this. You have to read a few verses beyond what you read here. What is the circumstances surrounding Jesus go up? And you will find that this is the circumstances. I'm doing a little Bible study, so you need to use your brain a little bit, okay? 
Look, verse 6, right? Verse 9 is when Jesus was taken from heaven. Verse 6, Jesus gathered around Jesus and had conversation about what? About the power, about restoration of the kingdom, right? And Jesus, in verse 7 to 8, Jesus gave a mission to the disciple, right? You will receive the power. And after the instruction, he was taken up. So that is the circumstances. Now, when I read this, I remember actually Jesus did give a hint on going away. He gave one parable, then this is in Matthew chapter 25, right? It's like a man going away on the journey. And when he went on the journey, before the journey, he gathered his people, his servant, three servants. This is the parable of the talent. How many are um, familiar with that, right? What happened? Call all the servants, give one five talents of gold, five bags of gold, the other two bags of gold, and the one one bag according to his ability. Then he went on the journey. But the story, the parable did not end there. Because in verse 19, it says, after a long time, the master of the servant returned and settled account. So I believe this is the key of understanding in the same way, meaning like this. Jesus went, but before he went, he gave instruction for all of us to be witness. Amen? How many remember? Verse 8, you will become my witness. But the angel is reminding the disciples. Guys, this is not the end of the story. He will come back again. And then he will settle account. So if you look at the chart, it looks like this. In the same way, giving instruction, going away. Then he will come back and checking result. He will come back and checking result. So the angel said, men of Galilee, snap out of it, man. Don't be just standing there. Start doing something. Why? Because God, the same Jesus is going to come back again. He's going to check for the results. He has given you the power of the Holy Spirit. He has given you bags of gold talents. What are you going to do about it? Are you going to just stand there and do nothing? Don't just stand there. Start doing something with what you have. He has given you the power. In fact, he will come back. Revelation chapter 22, that's the book of coming back. Wahyu. Yeah, the book of coming back. He said, look, Jesus said, I am coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to each person according to what they have done. What they have done. He will check to see whether the power that he has given you, the gold of bags that he has given you, how is that being managed? How is that going to be used? Just like the servant. How many understand the word of God? Hallelujah. I need to slow down a little bit so that you can chew it a bit. Yes? Yes. <laughs> I, when I'm excited, I go 150 miles per hour. Hallelujah. That is a parallel in the same way. And in fact, that's what the disciple did. A few days after this, a few days after this conversation, in fact, 10 days, exactly 10 days, in the day of the Pentecost. What happened in the day? You know, Pentecost, Penta means 50. 50 days after resurrection of Christ. That's 10 days from the 40th day. Okay? The Holy Spirit was poured down. They got the power, and they changed the history of the world. From a small group of a few people, today over 2 billion people believe and have the faith in Jesus Christ, and the whole world have heard of the name of Jesus. But that was 2,000 years ago. How about today? Today, the Holy Spirit has been here, poured out upon your life, since 2,000 years ago, upon the humanity, you have the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do? Are you going to wait around and see? Let's wait around and see how this pandemic is, is uh, going to be offered before I start doing something for God. Okay, I'll, I'll just wait and see. That wait and see is looking into heaven intently just bengong. It's not, you know, dumbfounded, not knowing what's going on. But the, the angels today is saying into your life, Snap out of it, man. Snap out of it, women. You got the power. You're going to start living. 
You start. You need to start being alive. You got into. You need. You need to just move into the mission and start doing the mission that Jesus give you. Because if you don't do this, you may think, ah, you know, what, what's wrong with waiting? I can wait, you know. I mean, it's not that safe right now. And they're saying that there's a new, uh, uh, new virus um, mutation. It's called Neo-COVID now uh, in China. It, that's going to kill, you know, one out of three people that it infect. It's very deadly, uh, although it's only in China. You know, I'll just, this is too crazy for me to do anything. I'll just stay home and do nothing. Well, the disciple did not have an easier time compared to us. They too, at that time, were chased by the Roman soldiers and by the Jewish authorities. They can easily say, hey, I don't want to do anything. I just want to go back to Galilee. Jerusalem is not my city. Let me go home. Let me find safety. But they did not. They stayed a few years and experienced the move of God, the greatest move of God in their time and until generation. They were faithful. They did not run away. They go out there and show everybody that Jesus is alive as a witness. That's exact, they, are, they are doing exactly what Jesus commanded them. And this is the thing. If you say, I just want to wait. I don't want to do anything. Okay? There is a risk to that. The risk is what? The risk is you will have no growth. And even worse you will fall away. Even whatever faith that you have now, if you don't start being active, it can die down. It, your faith can die. You're so many Christians today, because after the pandemic two years, you know, they didn't go to church. They were not involved in anything meaningful as far as their Christian life. Today, they're not even in the church anymore. They quit going to church. In fact, according to a survey, 40% of Christians is no longer a Christian. They, they believe in Jesus, probably. They, they have the title Christian. Okay? But they're not a performing disciple. They underperform the will of God in accomplishing God's purpose for their life. They fail to live as a fruitful disciple. They were still looking into heaven, curious what's gonna, what God's going to do next time. You know, i just curious, but stand there doing nothing. I think you and I, we need to start taking action, just like the disciple. Hallelujah. I know I preach a little longer today. Allow me a few more minutes to land this. Is it okay? Yeah? A few more minutes? It's time for us to listen to the angels. That's exactly what you need to do, to... to Start living your life according to the purpose. You need to start being a witness because that is the last instruction that J Jesus gave to his disciple. You need to be a witness. So the question is, how do we become witness? How do we become witness for Christ? By turning, listen to this, by turning the thing that you are in awe of into testimony. By giving him credit of all the successes we receive by acknowledging him with all the help he has given us during our time of difficulty. Being a witness. Hallelujah. It's very simple. Being a witness does not mean you have to become a pastor. If God calls you to be a pastor, that's great. But you can be a witness in everything that you do daily. If God calls you to be a student, then study hard, pray hard, and then tell others, God indeed has given me re do, doing remarkable things in my life. If you are a career person, work hard, get that promotion, and then testify when you get the promotion. God indeed has done remarkable things in my life. That's what a witness is. If you're a parent, teach your children to be a godly children, and then give God the credit that God has indeed done a remarkable thing in our family. Hallelujah. How many understand it? If you are a disciple of Jesus, study the word. Know the wisdom of God's word. And get the wisdom and then give credit to God. God, 
tell others. God has indeed done remarkable thing in our life. In all season of your life, let me close with this. In all season of your life, observe God's hand on your life and then give God credit by giving testimony as a witnesses so others will know that Jesus is indeed alive in your lives. Hallelujah. In the same way, he, will, he went, so he will come. That means he will check on your life. Somebody said, doing nothing gets you nothing. You want to get nothing? Then do nothing. And someone who likes to play soccer say this, football in Indo. You cannot score a goal when you are sitting on the bench. Jadi pemain cadangan itu gak bisa dapat goal. If you want to get a goal to do so, you have to dress up with your sports clothing and enter the game. If you want to live according to God's purpose, stop being a spectator. Stop being a spectator and become someone who is actively involved. Living this life according to the power that God has given you. Hallelujah. And then give God the glory by testifying to others. Jangan malu, don't be ashamed. You are experiencing God's favor or blessing or not in your life. If so, then give credit to God. And even if you are still in the difficult time of your life right now, you're struggling. Do you know that God gave you the strength and wisdom to continue to be strong and to have the faith? Also, you give testimony to others about that. You know, life is not always success, right? There are struggling time. But during struggling time, you can also give God a glory by a witness. You can tell others, God has indeed done remarkable thing. From awe to praise. From praise to action. Being a witness is being alive in living by the power of the Holy Spirit and telling others how awesome God's work is in you indeed. There is no better way of living. If you want to be alive, live in clarity, in the power of the Holy Spirit, you can. It's available to you. But you have to have in, in you that awe. And to have that awe, you look into your life. Did God do something for me? Whenever you want to go to sleep, you think for a moment and reflect. What did God have done? What have God done in your life? Are you thankful or not? Are you recognizing that is God? That is God. You have indeed done remarkable things. And then you tell others. You tell others, God has done this for me. What a wonderful God. What an awesome God He is. And generate praise from the people. Hallelujah. Let's all stand.